Which factors influence your career in biomedical science? Let's take a look. So you plan on studying biomedical science or you're already busy studying biomedical science and you're probably already wondering what your first job will be like, where you will end up in. Well, let me tell you that first job is kind of important, but you still have 40 more years to work after that. So do I know already where I will end up? Hell no. Do you already have a clear idea where you will end up? Probably not. But listen, that's okay. It's called a career, which is a series of jobs and careers can be varying in form. They can be continuously growing. They can go exponential. They can go even horizontal or they can even decline. It depends on several factors. And the first important factor is your study track. In general, the longer you study, the more career advancement you will have, but that's not always true. Do know that if you have a bachelor's and start working or compared to a master's when you start working or you go for a PhD and then you start working, you will be limited in your options if you compare, for instance, a bachelor with a PhD. Not so certainly the limitation in getting to some kind of career path, but rather the time perhaps to get there. For instance, you can be a bachelor's degree, be technically focused and then enter an industry, enter a company, a biotech company, and they see that you're ambitious and have the right set of skills. Well, they can launch you on a career path to let's say becoming a scientist. But on the other hand, if you have a PhD, you can immediately enter the job role of a scientist. Actually, another factor that is closely linked with your study track, your bachelor's, master's or PhD level are the skills you learn. So you can divide those into hard skills or technical skills, like for instance, being able to work with GraphPad software or being able to perform an ELISA in the lab. Those are hard skills, technical skills. But then you also have soft skills like management, project management, good communication, good writing skills, etc. So a good tip for that is to start listing your skills on LinkedIn. I mentioned this before in one of my other videos. You can check that here. Is to build a LinkedIn profile as soon as possible to get your skills on there. It's a sort of online resume. If you think this video is informative, please make sure to hit that like button and share it with other people that you think might benefit from it. And if you already have an idea on what you want to become with a biomedical science degree, I would love to hear about that in the comments below. So leave a comment. If there's more people who have a bachelor's in that industry setting, you're competing actually. So there's competition everywhere. There's also competition when the PhDs have to uh, go for job vacancies and go for the interviews, of course. But inside the company, you might be competing with your direct colleague to launch yourself into that higher career path. And then the inverse might be true also. I know people who have a PhD who decided to stay in the lab and actually do the work of someone with a bachelor's or a master's. It depends on your personal preferences, of course. Which actually brings me to number two, your personal preferences. And this is actually a broad term which we can actually subdivide, but let me give you some examples with some questions that you might ask yourself when you're hunting for a job or busy growing your career in a certain direction, you have to contemplate with yourself about things that might hinder you or that you don't like to do. For instance, are you willing to travel? You don't want to become a medical sales rep who has to fly all over Europe, for instance, to sell medical equipment or pharmaceuticals if you're not willing to travel a lot, if you hate jet lag and stuff like that. If you don't like sitting behind a desk all day long, then there's no point in taking an administrative job where you only have to write, for instance, inside a biomedical company or when writing scientific for something or writing for scientific journals. So of course this requires some self-knowledge and the better you know yourself, the better you can find a career path or get into a career path that will suit you. Getting to know yourself, what your preferences are, what you like, what you dislike, what you're good at, what your skills are, what you can improve, the sooner you start with that already, the better. And there's actually some handy tools that I learned 
from the HR department back in my old company. It's called, the first one is called the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which through a series of questions lets you determine a bit what kind of personality type you are. Now, don't stare blind on that because if you take the test maybe twice, you will have different results, but it sort of gives you already an indication. So I put it in the description below. Take the test, even take them twice or three times, but don't stare blind on that. It's only indicative, but it can help you to figure out what you would want in your career and how that fits your personality. Now the second is the Career Anchors by Shine. And that is also a tool that lets you reflect on what you expect in your career, what your values are and how it all matches and how it balances. Perhaps you're interested in buying the book so I've put the link to that in the description below as well. Definitely do some research on that and the sooner you get to know yourself better, the better you can find out what you want in your career, during your career development, maybe in your first job, check that out. Now, I must say this, you will get to know yourself more better as you grow in your career and times may change. You, you have a mindset probably now that maybe is considering partying combined with the studying, but maybe you'll see, you will, you will get more serious, maybe you will want to yeah, go deeper into that career, take the most out of it. It all depends where you want to end up in with that. So the third factor is actually your ambition, which is also perhaps linked with yeah another factor, which I'll call factor four, your willingness to keep learning. Keep learning. Some people are okay with like doing 20 years of the same job, which requires day in, day out, doing the same type of work and it gets easier. Some people like that because maybe due to their number two factor, their personal preferences, they like it like that, don't only do the eight hours of work and then yeah, get out and focus on their hobbies and stuff. So that's actually not factor number five, is your personal life. And let me give you a hint, how your career develops will be how all these factors are balanced. So coming back to number three and four, if you have ambition and you wanna get somewhere, you have to be prepared to keep learning because you can't grow if you don't learn. And perhaps this is also again linked to your personal preferences because maybe you just want to get out of school quickly, have that degree to have a, a fairly decent job and then just be at ease and maybe then for your personal life, your factor five, you have money enough to travel more for instance. So your balance would be different than someone who puts all their efforts in their ambition to become a CEO, for instance, because that will require a lot of business skills that they have to learn in business school, which is something that maybe after your scientific development as biomedical scientist, that will come later on. Factor number six is the stage of the company where you work at in terms of type of work and career development and salary and stuff like that. It can differ if you start in a startup, or are working as your first job or continue growing your career in a well-established pharmaceutical or biotech company. The dynamics in the startup versus a big established company are very, very different. So in a startup setting, you will probably get more responsibility, will have to perhaps give some extra, have to be willing to put in some more work because the company is being launched, they have to survive. So they only have like capital investment stakeholders and they still have to prove something compared to the well-established company. The stock is going stable. They give dividends uh, yearly to their stakeholders, their stockholders. And yeah, it's less likely that the company will go bankrupt uh, compared to the startup that will, that has a higher chance of chance of failing. So if you land a job in a startup, you automatically have a bit more responsibility so you can mean more for the company, but it will require more work and more responsibility. Yeah, you have to be willing to put in the work. And that doesn't mean that if you're lazy, you have to go to a big company. If you're ambitious to a startup, you can be lazy in a startup. Usually those people will be, yeah, will not be able to run along with the pace that the company goes. Or you can be ambitious in a big company as well, that, that's no problem. You can lift your career in that setting as well. But like for your first job, 
make sure you check out at what stage the company you're interested in is at and yeah for further development you might switch companies who knows where you'll end up in i don't know where i'll end up in no one knows but you can already have a sense of direction of course and that's why i'm giving you these factors and a seventh factor would be your network it's often said that it's not what you know but who you know so perhaps someone you know from studying with you have them on linkedin they can lend you a job put in a good word for you that's networking that is also something that can drive your career and then one more thing there's also a piece of luck but that's in everything sometimes you just need some luck on your side as well but guess what i'll tell you this i'm a big believer that you oftentimes create your own luck so luck to me is where preparation meets opportunity to end this video i made an overview of those factors in a sort of diagram so you can pause this video to have a look again at what those factors are and how they can influence your biomedical science career and i see you in the next one thanks for watching cheers